Hello everyone, Harry here, welcome to Scrap Science. Today I have a very exciting material to show you. This is an electrode material with some very, very cool properties. And as it turns out, it's probably the most expensive item that I own, accounting for its weight, of course. To put it in perspective, um, this is a platinum electrode. Uh, consisting of a piece of pure platinum foil at the end. I've used it in a couple of videos now. Um, this is a precious metal, rather expensive as you're probably aware. Buying this little square of mystery material cost me about six times as much as the platinum electrode did. So cautiously, uh, we're going to open this up and get this material out. Nice. Now, if you've already figured out what this thing is, um, well done. If you're not an electrochemist, I'd be surprised if you've ever seen or heard of it, in fact. Um, this is diamond, um, artificial diamond grown by chemical vapor deposition, um, hence why it's in the shape of a little square. Now, there's nothing all that special about a lab-grown diamond, but this piece of diamond specifically is made to be doped with, like, 0.2% boron. That's what's making it this color. If you know your material science, um, you hear the fact that a four valent element like carbon is doped with a three valent element like boron, alarm bells might be ringing, um, and correctly so, because this piece of boron doped diamond is a semiconductor, and we've got a high enough concentration of boron to actually conduct electricity quite well at room temperature. I have a multimeter here, hopefully you can see the screen, um, and if we probe our boron doped diamond surface, you can see that we're actually measuring a rather low resistance there. That's maybe 10 to 20 ohms, and most of that is actually due to the contact resistance between um, my probes and the actual diamond surface. This material is a P-type semiconductor, so as we're conducting electricity through it right now, it's actually conducting current in the form of electron holes. Anyway, to the electrochemistry. This is an excellent electrode material with some really, really impressive properties. We are essentially combining the chemical stability of diamond with electrical conductivity. As you might know, diamond is not very chemically active. In fact, I, I genuinely can't think of any reactions that it would undergo at room temperature. I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me if I'm wrong on that. And in fact, we can demonstrate its chemical stability right now. We can chuck it in strong base nothing we can chuck it in strong acid nothing what other chemical tests are there that we could do um, i suppose we can put it under strongly oxidizing potentials for both of these conditions as well what i've done here is i've got a strip of titanium um, a little thing to clamp down the diamond onto the end of it, and we've made ourselves um, a little boron doped diamond electrode here. We also see no degradation in either case, even when using this thing as an anode. As a little side note, if we were to use platinum as the anode in the case of electrolyzing concentrated hydrochloric acid, it would be completely destroyed. Platinum does not survive oxidizing potentials when there is a high concentration of chloride in acidic conditions. I'd show you, but I'm not going to destroy this electrode. If we compare this degree of chemical stability to various other possible electrode materials that I happen to have on hand, We can make a table like this to try to describe the inertness of these electrodes. As you can see, boron doped diamond is unparalleled in terms of stability. As another little side note, graphite, which is another carbon based conductor, is slightly less inert than boron doped diamond because sp2 hybridized carbon is somewhat more reactive than sp3 hybridized carbon, um, and the graphite layers are mechanically easier to separate and break up. Anyway, if the chemical stability of this electrode is not enough to convince you of how useful it is, um, we can also, hopefully, demonstrate its interesting electrochemical properties too. If we just perform a simple test of electrolyzing water, a solution of sodium hydroxide, um, with each of our electrodes here, we'll be able to show a feature of boron-doped diamond that far outshines all of the other electrodes here. 
I'm going to electrolyze water with each of these electrodes as the anode, the electrodes that we described in the table before. Um, I'm going to try my best to keep the surface areas consistent. We're going to have a nickel cathode um, and that'll be consistent through all the runs and the electrode separation I'll try to maintain constant as well. To do this test, what we're going to do is, is apply a voltage between our nickel cathode and whichever anode we choose, and then slowly increase the voltage until we see 50 milliamps flowing through the setup. This is the setup here. I have our nickel cathode that we're going to be using for all of the tests. Uh, we're using nickel as the anode for our first little experiment. I'm measuring current here, and I'm going to slowly increase the voltage until we see 50 milliamps flowing. About 50 milliamps flowing through the cell, and it takes about 2.2 volts to get that to happen on our nickel anode. Swapping for a platinum anode at about the same distance, again we're going to increase the voltage. I'm going to say that's good again, and checking the voltage this time. You notice now with our platinum electrode, we actually require 2.7 volts in order to get 50 milliamps to flow through the cell. And that's for approximately the same electrode surface area. Next, we have mixed metal oxide, a mixture of ruthenium dioxide and iridium dioxide coated on titanium, increasing the voltage. And yep, I'm going to call that good. Um, on MMO, our voltage is 2.3 volts this time. Again, for the same electrode surface area. Proceeding with graphite now. For this one, checking the voltage, once again it's about 2.3 volts. Um, I wish I had a more accurate description of the voltage, but I've only got the one multimeter so we can only measure um, the current accurately. And finally, the thing we actually want to test, the boron doped diamond, increasing the voltage one final time. Alright, got it once again. Checking the voltage, this time we need a full 2.9 volts in order to get 50 milliamps to flow through the cell to get the reaction rate happening that fast. What we've really done here is an extremely crude test of the kinetics of the alkaline oxygen evolution reaction on each of these electrode surfaces. Um, first of all, it's interesting that the reaction happens at different rates on different materials, even when the same potential, same surface area, same electrode separation is applied. Of course, this is hardly a perfectly controlled test, but I promise the trends that we're seeing are meaningful. The reason behind these differences is due to the fact that different electrode materials have different tendencies to bind to reactant and product species when doing these half reactions, and it alters the kinetics of the various reaction steps. Anyway, I don't want to get too in-depth with that. In these little tests, we've shown that nickel is the best at doing the oxygen evolution reaction under these conditions. Likewise, um, MMO and graphite are a little bit worse than that. Platinum is much worse than that. And topping the worst of the worst of doing the alkaline oxygen evolution reaction is our boron doped diamond. We have to push the voltage really, really high to get it to do the reaction we want it to do. Now, okay, our boron doped diamond is really bad at making oxygen, we have found out. And this is a really, really useful property of the material, believe it or not. First of all, it widens the electrochemical window of water, meaning we can get oxidations to happen in aqueous conditions that would normally exist just beyond the oxidation potential of water. Additionally, the fact that it's so bad at oxygen evolution, in other words, um, this half reaction, and it is really bad at doing this reaction, means that we're actually pushing the electrode to oxidize a little bit of water in a different way. This way. This is a really thermodynamically tricky reaction, 
but it occurs just a little bit on a boron-doped diamond surface. As a result, we generate, transiently, a little bit of this thing, the hydroxyl radical. And this thing is a very, very powerful oxidizer. A higher oxidizing potential than permanganate, higher than per sulfate, higher than ozone even. In fact, it gets into the territory where we're almost rivaling fluorine's oxidizing potential. Since we make not insignificant amounts of this thing, we can actually use it as an intermediate for oxidation reactions that are really, really difficult. Things like making perchlorate or persulfate or possibly even perbromate, which is really special, have been reported to have been done with these electrodes under very achievable conditions. We're not going to be trying any of those things today. Uh, this is just a short video to introduce the electrode, but I am very excited for the future. This is a very cool electrode. I'm keen for the videos we're going to be able to make with this, and I hope you are too. But till then, see you later.